It's four o'clock on Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi Music's Quarantini Happy Hour. This week, starring universal lyrics for pandemic film and television with Robin Frederick. Woo! Thank you, fake audience. Thank you, cheesy fake band. Notice I added a word there. Cheesy. That's my big project for the day was adding a word. Uh, get the chat room open, say hello to the people that aren't there yet because they're just getting the notifications now. And yes, of course, we've got Dan Weber. Hello, Dan uh, and Dean Turner. Others will show up momentarily. I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, Kira Canyon, hello. How are you? Uh, so yeah, Robin's going to be joining us in a few minutes. I'm sure she's... Uh, watching from the comfort of her home. She actually lives kind of close to me. She lives like yeah, 15 minutes away. Um, hello, Lamar Pecorino, Space Miss. That's it, huh? <laughs> Audience of four, uh, five. Well, I will pass a little time while we're waiting for the other folks to show up. Hey, happy Ron, how are you, man? Um, so I've mentioned before, you know, that, that I've got a gopher problem, and they seem to have relocated. I haven't seen any new mounds now in about 40 hours. So happy about that. Um, but uh, I think I also mentioned we have a coyote problem, and, and the coyote is getting more comfortable in our backyard on a daily basis. And I've spoken to the neighbors on both sides of me, and they too have seen the coyote. Uh, this dog, uh, yeah, it's a dog. It'll come right up to our back door. I mean, literally right up to the back door. I've got here. Hey, John, how are you? And Tamara Miller. Hey, Marcus, how are you? Um, I don't want that. Let me see if I can find a picture of... There we go. Okay, see that? That's the coyote at our doormat about a week ago. So uh, this morning I went downstairs to make my little English muffin and make a cup of coffee, standing in the kitchen window, uh, looking out at our backyard. And as anybody who's ever lived in California knows, when I say backyard, I'm not talking like a backyard in Kentucky or Ohio or Colorado. I'm talking a Los Angeles backyard. So it's, I don't know, maybe 30 feet deep. Um, anyway, there's the coyote bounding across the backyard like he owns the place. And he's big. They say the coyotes only get up to 50 pounds in California. They haven't met our coyote yet. Um, this coyote, uh, Deb and I have a grand dogger. A dogger. We have a granddaughter too. But our granddaughter, Molly, is a German shepherd. She weighs about 85 pounds. And this thing is not that much smaller than her. It's tall. It's like tall at the shoulders. Um, it's not heavy. Um, Anyway, so the neighbors are all like, geez, what do we do about this thing? Because it's starting to show up pretty much every day of the week. So I found a place that does live trapping today. They take like one of those dog pens that's got a, you know, a trigger in the floor and they hang half a dead chicken in there. I mean, probably pick it up at Costco if they can get in the store. Um, the coyote walks in to have breakfast and the door shuts behind it and the coyote is unharmed. Yay. And then they take the coyote in the back of a van and release it, uh, what's called the Camarillo grade, which is about, I don't know, 10 miles from here. Very rural area, and they let it go. And um, it's uh, probably a male, they said, So because that was my wife's concern, is we don't want to take a mommy away from her pups. It is springtime. Um, this thing is, is bold, man. It's brave. It just doesn't care who's around. And the people on that side of us have probably about a nine-month, a ten-month-old baby. I don't think they can be taking that kid in the uh, backyard for a while. Anyway, hopefully this coyote will get relocated for real um, and uh, be happier wherever he moves to. 
which is the Camarillo grade, which is technically in another county, and I hear the taxes are cheaper there. So he'll have more spending money. All right, so uh, I am going to call Robin in a minute. Uh, I also want to address, somebody asked, uh, I want to ask you guys, get a little feedback. Somebody asked in the uh, comment area under yesterday's video, I believe. Oops, I need to mute that, don't I? Um, somebody asked if Taxi will ever allow a monthly payment plan. Um, we don't want to do a monthly payment plan, but we have talked about uh, a great deal doing a three pay. Um, I got the idea actually from one of the places where I buy uh, remote control planes and they have a thing where you can pay it off over three months. So it would be uh, basically a hundred bucks a month. Um, we would charge a little bit more because there's a processing fee. Um, you know, somebody else takes over the responsibility of collecting the money, I forget who it is but would you guys um be interested uh when you could uh, most of you guys are probably already members but for those of you who are watching who are not members uh let us know in the comment area on this video wait like 10 minutes after the show you'll be able to post in the comments let us know if you'd be interested in doing a three payment plan so there's that um qvc easy pay there you go Marcus, when do you find the time to watch QVC ever, 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 ever? All right, uh, I'm going to call Robin in one more minute. Andrew Stepanian just renewed for two years. He's good. Um, you used to work at QVC. Were you one of the models? All things audio. Oh, okay. So, you know, I mean, with a face like that, how could you not be one of the models? And here we have the lovely whatever. I've never really, I, I can't watch QVC. I've tried a few times, but it's, yeah. Um, I did enjoy the movie about the woman who invented the uh, new mop and got it on QVC. That was a good movie. All right, let me call Robin Frederick so we can talk about universal lyrics for pandemic films and TV shows. I'm really curious to get her take on this. I know. Let's prank Robin. Let's give out her home phone number. She's watching right now. She wants to kill me. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, Robin. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah, I've got you nice and loud. Hi, Robin. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Wow, great signal. Um, last couple of people I've had on the show, they were kind of soft, and I was a little worried, but not you. You're coming in loud and clear, which is great. So how are you uh, faring during the uh, lockdown? Well, you know, this is pretty much my normal life here. Uh, <laughs> it's a... Uh, and I'm an introvert anyway, and I like to sit around at home and work on my computer, and that's just what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, so I'm doing good. I, it's funny, you know, I consider myself an introvert as well, but I don't think anybody who knows us in the context of what we do professionally would think of either yeah. one of us as an introvert. Man, you know, we put you on the stage at the road rally, and, and you're one of the greatest public speakers we've ever had there. I cannot... I, Really, you're an introvert? Like, if you go to a party, you prefer to talk to one good friend the whole night off in a corner somewhere? Totally. I, like, never go to parties. Yeah, um, me either. I, yeah. <laughs> we should avoid them together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Maybe that's why we get along so well. We're cut from the same weird cloth. <laughs> well, yeah. For those of you who, who don't know, there, there are bound to be some people that will watch the show later that aren't part of the regular crew, and... Uh, I want to let you know that Robin Frederick is one of the great songwriting teachers and authors, a best-selling author, actually, and she's done a number of books, but the one that's most relevant for today uh, is this one, Shortcuts to Songwriting for Film and TV. Um, it's the only book on the market 
that covers this topic. And frankly, I'm just so proud of Robin on one hand that she spent a year of her life to really dig into this and continues to. Um, and I'm also dismayed that nobody else has ever covered this topic because writing songs for film and television and commercials are uh, very, very, very different than doing songs for records and radio. I mean, yes, they both have a lyric, they both have a beat, uh, and they both have a melody, but that's about where the similarities stop. So, Robin, can you give us a little summary of kind of a synopsis, if you will, of, you know, what are the elements of a song that would be useful in film and television? Okay, um, so the first thing, we're talking about lyrics today, um, and the first thing we know, we all know this, uh, a lot of us now know this, um, which is that film and television uses universal lyrics, and then the question is, what does that mean? A lot of people make the mistake of thinking it means generic, um, you know, something that will just appeal to everybody. Right. But it really means writing about emotion, because emotions are universal. That's the universal part of universal lyrics. You're writing about emotion. You're not writing a story. So when you write for radio, all you have is the song. There's no visual to go with it. It's just a song to grab and hold the listener and keep them there for three minutes um, without getting, you know, without letting them reach over and push the button and just change that station because it's so easy to do now. Um, so that's what radio songs have to do. It's a very different market and a different use. Film and television wants songs that will underscore and enhance a scene or a character or, you know, make, give the listener, give the viewer a better experience and a more memorable experience before that scene is over. That's what these songs, universal lyrics, that these songs have to do. And it's quite different when there's a picture. When there's a picture being put to your lyric, you can't be telling a story, obviously, because the script is going to do that. So, and you can't do the scriptwriter's job for them. So you have to write a song that will underscore and support whatever, whatever the script is doing. And that means writing um, lyrics about emotion. And then whatever that scene is doing, it doesn't, almost doesn't matter. Whatever the character is feeling is what the song is supporting. Feeling being the primary uh, focus, absolutely. I've learned that from you, and uh, I remember the day you first told me that, and I thought, wow, that really sums it up in a single word, because you're right, uh, all other songs basically are a story. Um, you know, they have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You want to invite the les listener in with, you know, details and bring them into the story. In this case, it's all about that feeling. So... Let's talk about, uh, as I told you yesterday, we've been running a lot of listings and we're going to start having a lot more of them coming up in the days to come. We've been uh, tweaking them and getting them ready for publication and they're still coming in like crazy. So uh, a lot of listings where people are going to be looking for songs that will work on Lifetime movies, Hallmark Channel movies, um, could be big feature films. Um, I'm sure there will be episodes of all the regular dramas out there. I think I mentioned in my uh, thing that I did on Monday, you know, anything from a show like Suits, they could tackle a legal issue as it relates to the pandemic. The show Billions could talk about the financial ruin uh, that was, was, you know, wreaked on Wall Street by... Uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, obviously, you know, the, the nurse and doctor shows and the 911 first responder shows, all those are going to have episodes that are going to be about the pandemic because it's current. It's what's going on in our lives, in humanity right now. So with that in mind, um, myself and uh, my team at Taxi and some of the companies that are running listings with us, we, we've built a list. And, and frankly, I think this one is short a few, a few items, but I'm going to rattle them off and then we're going to have Robin talk about some of these. Um, themes will be familial love, romantic love, having hope, uh, getting through tough times, light at the end of the tunnel, taking care of others, beating the odds, Staying strong in the face of adversity. Introspective, like you're sizing up your life in the, in the face of pending doom. Um, retrospective, looking back at one life's, uh, one's life fondly or with regret. 
could be also retrospective playing under, as I've said before in the show, somebody just got back from a funeral or they just got home from the hospital and they just lost a loved one. And they're having a flashback thinking about, you know, when this guy was a little boy and this was his dad or mom or whatever, you know, retrospective, hopelessness, um, loneliness, fear of the unknown, friendship, overcoming hardships, um, rising from the ashes, there, uh, heroism. There are going to be so many shows, and rightfully so, that are going to feature stories about the frontline responders, first responders, the, the doctors, the nurses, the lab techs, the ambulance drivers, the orderlies in the hospital, just everybody you can possibly imagine who took care of somebody um, during this very sad time in our lives. So, Robin, do you have any of these that have resonated particularly well for you that you would like to tell us how you would approach or recommend that these guys approach um, writing universal lyrics for any of these topics? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Those are great topics. And I want to add, not only are we certain that TV series and films will be coming out with these themes, but you're already seeing commercials. Oh, Lots of them. Tons of yeah, them. Yeah, because commercial fast turnaround. And I figured it would happen pretty quickly. At first, you were seeing commercials where they changed, just changed the voiceover. But now you're starting to see whole commercials shot with those many of those um, emotions that you just listed. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for those ads for home care, insurance, healthy food, any company that's delivering food, you know, the new touch, touchless delivery. All of those commercials are, are now on the air, and a lot of them feature songs. There's a ton of songs on television. More, I don't think it's because I'm just noticing it, because I always do watch for them, but it does seem like there's more now than I have seen, particularly in commercials, because songs speak so emotionally and do such a good job of reaching out to listeners and making them feel better or feel warmth, feel comforted. Um, and I think that's one of the main emotions that you're going to see in commercials for a while and the tv series will will do it like for hallmark channel they'll do that at the end of the show to leave the viewer with a good feeling at the end of the show make them want to watch that show again or come back to the channel so those were the ones i sort of focused on um out of that list as you were reading it those were the ones that jumped out at me so let me give you you a couple of those a few of those and I'll give you some successful songs that have already been used uh, to do something like that. And some I'm hearing right now. Okay. I heard a couple of these. Uh, yeah. So um, what we want to do, let's say, let's say what, what, what the challenge is now is not just to write a universal lyric, but write a universal lyric that evokes a particular emotion or range of emotions that you want. And we don't usually talk about that specifically is how do you target that if you're writing an emotional song how do you get that emotion particular emotion that you want from from the listener you want the listener to feel so there's a the best way to approach emotional uh, universal lyrics you could say um let's say that it's um supportive uh we'll get through a tough time okay. let's say you could say let me be there for you and that's great that's a great line for that song um, but that's just one line. How do you write an entire song that says, let me be there for you without just repeating that over and over? So one way to build on that is to compare that feeling to something else. So we're going to be talking today a lot about images, actions, physical sensations that you can compare that emotion to. Um, so let me give you a real simple example um, for the theme, we'll get through a tough time. I thought that was a great one, and you're going to see a lot of it. There's a song called Recover by Natasha Bedingfield, um, and it was released on one of her albums, and it was used in a commercial right after Hurricane Sandy. And I remember noticing it. It was used by an insurance company, absolutely beautiful song, called Recover. And in this song, she comes right out and says it. Uh, the lyric for the chorus is, We will recover. The worst is over now. You know, but where do you go after that? We will recover. The worst is over now. All those fires we've been walking through, and still we survive somehow. So she used the image of fire, and of course sometimes that is exactly the problem um, that you're recovering from, uh, 
But she says, all those fires we've been walking through, walking through fire, a trial by fire, is a great example of something that we use as a uh, phrase when somebody has been through a trial by fire. All of those fires, all those trials we've been walking through, and still we survive somehow. We will recover. The worst is behind, and it hurts, but in time, I know that we will recover. So she starts with the word recover, and she finishes her payoff line with, I know it hurts, but in time, I know that we will recover. And so her message is encapsulated in the beginning and the ending of that chorus. She lets you know what it is, and she uses the image of walking through fire. You can't run through it. You can't get through it any faster than you are. You have to just walk through it, but you will survive. So it's a very direct message, very successful song, um, and that's a beautiful chorus uh, that was used in that commercial. Her verse, because a verse comes first in this case, she didn't start with the chorus, she started with the verse, is also interesting. She says, been torn apart, got so many scratches and scars, So she starts with something dark, something that's not optimistic, doesn't say we'll recover. We've been torn apart, got so many scratches and scars. Then the next two lines, maybe they won't all go away, but they'll fade. And I think that's so important because what she's doing is being realistic. It's not false hope. Be honest in your writing. Don't try to make people feel something they're not ready to feel or they can't feel. Maybe they won't all go away, but they'll fade is the most she can say about this. And I think that that's the hope that she gives, and it's enough. Maybe time can mend us together again. It's not what we've done, but how far we've come. The beautiful verse. It starts dark, but then it turns in a realistic way towards, but we'll get through this. It's not what we've done, but how far we've come. So do you think... Sorry. Sorry, I cut you off. Do you think she um, employed, like in advertising, you know, you present a problem and a solution. Um, Yeah. Do you think she actually sat down and thought about that as she was writing? Or, you know, did it come back? No, I think she was looking at the, probably looking at the images on television and of the Hurricane Sandy and uh, she felt it and wrote what she felt. Um, and, but I imagine there was quite a bit of rewriting in there because it's really beautifully crafted. That doesn't usually come out in your first draft. Right. Um, you have to follow your feelings and be honest with your own feelings. You, you can't write something that's, okay, we're all going to feel good today because that's what we want. It doesn't work, especially when people are going through, and we all are. This isn't about, you know, a fire in California or a flood in, Louis, in, in New Orleans. This is something the whole world is going through. So you can't pretend that this is anything other than what it is and and be honest about the feelings that you can summon up that can give you hope and can carry you through this. Sometimes it's just the belief that, well, maybe it won't all go away, but, you know, it'll fade over time. It's okay. And, And that's what she did here. Beautiful song, beautiful commercial. The song again is "Recover" by Natasha Bedingfield. Little known, okay. uh, a little bit of taxi trivia. Her sister, uh, Natasha's sister, was a taxi screener for about uh, two years. Robin, I believe. Um, Quite a long, for a couple of years, and then she went and got busy for a while with her songwriting, and then she came back again. Yeah. Right, and uh, I'm not sure if she even lives in the States anymore, but she actually turned out to be a great screener and, and was quite accomplished in her own right. Um, and yeah. a lovely person, I might add. Um, okay, so when what are some words that people should probably avoid, uh, not only because some might be cliches, but you know, too direct, too on the nose. Like, obviously, you wouldn't want somebody saying, you know, rhyming the word COVID in a lyric. Are there other things that you could think of that people should avoid that w- would not be universal and would be too direct? I think it's probably in context. Um, you know, you're right. Don't, I wouldn't say COVID-19 because <laughs> it's going to date. You want this song to work because, you know, it's like she wrote this song, Recover, for a hurricane, but it doesn't say, it doesn't even mention floodwaters, it says fire. Right. Um, and I think that, you know, it matters, what matters is what it feels like to you. Um, 
and it was used in a commercial image that showed flood damage. But it was because fire is a comparison, and this is what I'm going to be talking about a lot today, is using comparisons at, to, to um, imagery, actions, um, physical sensations, to express what the emotion is that you're feeling. So I would stay away from things like COVID-19 or hospital, nurse, doctor, um, uh, EMT, emergency. Yeah, I, I would stay away from those words because these should be universal. Um, unfortunately, we'll always be faced with things like this. And so I would stay away from being very specific about the nature of this particular challenge because emotions... Have the same emotions occur no matter what the challenge is. So, for example, you put in your list and, and the list that you have of, emo of uh, feelings that are, people are asking for makes perfect sense. So let's say that they're asking for songs about taking care of others, you know, being there for other people. Right. That's a real theme for any emergency, any disaster, taking care of others. And we're proud of ourselves for being able to do that, for the, the lengths that people go to. And that's where the nurses and doctors and the emergency workers come in. You don't have to call them out. You can show us what it feels like to take care of or want to take care of someone else. There is a wonderful song by Rachel Platten called Stand By You that mm -hmm. I just heard yesterday. And I've always, I've been championing this song for quite a while. It, it wasn't as big a hit as her song, Fight Song. Um, it was the second single, and it didn't wasn't as big as the first one. But I always thought it was an extremely good song, and it makes a great use of imagery to create a universal lyric. Because what do you say about "Stand by You"? You know that isn't specific story. You know, here's what happened to you, and here's what I want to do about it. You you don't want to do that. So let me read a little bit of this. And when I say imagery again, I mean not only visual images, but also um, actions and physical sensations like touch, taste, um, uh, smell, all, you know, sound. And so she's using a lot of that here. She says, this is Stand By You, hands, put your empty hands in mine. And scars, show me all the scars you hide. And hey, if your wings are broken, uh, please take mine so yours can open too, because I'm going to stand by you. Hmm. It's just beautiful. Four lines that lead you right up to, because I'm going to stand by you, which is the first line of the chorus. It comes right out of the verse. Um, hands. Put, and you, that's a visual image of hands. And then she says, put your empty hands in mind. Those other hands don't have anything in them. They're empty. This person is in need. So she's in, intimating that without saying, I can see that you're in need. Put your empty hands in mind. And scars, there's those scars again. Show me all the scars you hide. And so, obviously, the other person is scarred. And, hey, if your wings are broken, right? Everyone, it, th there's that end angel image there. If your wings are broken, please take mine so yours can open too. So that's a way of saying, let me help you without saying, let me bring you food. Let me bring you medicine. Let me take you into this hospital. If your wings are broken, please take mine so yours can open too. And then she's into that chorus because I'm going to stand by you. Um, it's actually quite quite poetic, which mm -hmm. you know, it's actually quite poetic, and that speaks well to the, you know, tugging on the emotional heartstrings versus um, kind of standard lyric writing that isn't really all that poetic. It's certainly not in pop music today. So yeah, she, she gets more further in the beginning of the next verse. She says, "Tears, tears make kaleidoscopes in your eyes," which is true and poetic. And you can see that image, because, and we've all experienced it. When you have tears in your eyes, water in your eyes, it, it makes prisms out of things and blurs things. Tears make kaleidoscopes in your eyes. Hmm. And, and so that's as poetic as she gets in here. But yeah, if your wings are broken, that's a poetic line. It's the image of broken wings. We can feel it. And broken wings is an old, beautiful, old um, hymn image. Uh, it's very old. Uh, way of expressing somebody who's hurting. Borrow mine so yours can open. Please take mine. The second verse says, borrow mine so yours can open too. And that's what nurses do. So you could play this underneath a, a, a commercial or a, a, a PSA, 
a public service announcement or a hospital ad or any uh, documentary, and it'll work beautifully under caregivers because um, I'm going to stand by you is exactly the emotion that she finally comes out and says it directly. So that, that um, combination of direct statement and poetic imagery or imagery of any kind works really beautifully in universal lyrics. Absolutely. Um, in the, she goes on in the chorus, and if we're breaking down, we can find a way to break through. If we can't have heaven, if we can't find heaven, I'll walk through hell with you. It's just beautiful. And you can put that right over a picture of the you know people in the ICU, and you've got it nailed. Uh, again, that's Stand By You by Rachel Platten, and I just heard it yesterday in the background. I didn't even notice what it was for because I wasn't watching, uh, but I did hear it, and it's just perfect. Yeah, you know so, that's going to get licensed. I mean, there are going to be so many shows telling the great stories of uh, just, you know, the people in the hospital, every single person in the hospital, because they are literally all risking their lives to save others. But the pain that they feel seeing large numbers of people that they've lost in cities like New York, those are, they're going to be a million stories to be told, and that's a great song to underscore it. Yes, yes. So imagine the scene while you're writing your song. You know, it might help you to put yourself into the emotion that's going on um, or what it is you want to say about what's going on. Uh, because you can't tell a story, you've got to use the emotion that you see and feel and feel it yourself. Put yourself in the scene and feel it. Um, or feel what you want to say. And then compare it to what you to broken wings stand by you stand is always a strong word i'm going to stand by you um and the, the, you know how do you envision the people that you're helping the tears and the hands and the, and the wings those are all beautiful images that express somebody who's in need without saying i see that you're in need there are lots of songs like this so we want to look for something that's unique um simon and garfunkel did a great job with bridge over troubled water um, it's from a different angle. It's, you know, when you're down and out, let me be there for you. I'll be a bridge over troubled water. And there's your image. And, of course, it's based on a much more better known, um, almost a cliche, but a saying, uh, a bridge across troubled water. Um, I was looking, I was listening to a song recently. The people on my Facebook page know how I've been pushing this wonderful song from, the, from 1970 um, called Ain't Heavy. He's My Brother by the Hollies. And that's another one. You could play it then, but it fits now. These songs are timeless. You could use Bridge Over Troubled Water now, and of course it meant a great deal uh, back when it first came out. So it, these things are timeless. They, once you, if you write something that's, you, that works, that moves people, it could get used again and again. It's not just for this time. But that's the reason why, as you said earlier, try to avoid using words that are too specific uh, to the time and to this specific situation. I know we're going to get a lot of submissions from people that aren't watching this show and that haven't seen you talk about universal lyrics at the Red Rally, and they're going to send in lyrics that are going to be like, my heart was breaking as the ambulance with its red flashing lights drove away with you in the back. I mean, you yeah. can't do that because it tells a story that's already being told. Yes, and it's a story that everybody has seen many, many times. Yeah. So now, so what we want to do is get them to see it and feel it as if for the first time. That's the great power of songs is to make people feel emotion. It's very difficult for me to read these lyrics even because they make me feel so much. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do. If you're not crying while you write your lyric, then you're not on point. So <laughs> that's, that's, I have to say, um, about writing truth. Uh, when you're writing the real truth, you're probably crying. Um, so another way to do this uh, it, that's fun and, and really works well and is uh, pretty easy to do a universal lyric using what I call measuring sticks. Um, so let's take your theme that you gave uh, being um, steadfast, uh, um, sta it's kind of standing by somebody, but right. it's also being trust, unchanging, you know? And uh, I've got a couple of songs here that do this really well, so I just throw them by at you. Okay. Uh, these are 
these are measuring stick songs, they tell you how much I want to be there for you. Um, you know, I'll stand by you. Well, how much will you stand by me? This is, that's what these songs do. And there's songs like Gone, Gone, Gone uh, by Philip Phillips. Radio hit and has also been used in film and TV. And it's a whole series of, of uh, couplets. Uh, if you fall like a statue, I'll be there to catch you. If this happens, I'll do that. Um, I'll bake, steal, and borrow. You know, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, Bruno Mars has a song called Count on Me. And he, the lyric is, if you ever find yourself stuck in the middle of the sea, I'll sail the world to find you. If you ever find yourself lost in the dark and you can't see, I'll be the light to guide you. It's, it's a very simple formula, but it works quite well in this style because what you can, what you can do is say, how much do I feel? What's the feeling I'm talking about? Um, and, and how can I prove that I'm feeling that? What would I do for that, for you or that feeling? And, and you can have, uh, just do a list song uh, using a whole bunch of those examples. The great example of that type of song in a song called Start a Riot by an artist named Banners, B-A-N-N-E-R-S. And it was used in, a, in Lucifer, that show, he uses good songs. Um, and he starts out with, I will march down an empty street like a ship into the storm. No surrender, no retreat, I will tear down every wall. This is what I will do for you, right? Just to keep you warm, just to bring you home. I will burn this city down for a diamond in the dust. I will keep you safe and sound when there's no one left to trust. The beautiful song, Start a Riot by Banners. And it's a list song, a list of things this person would do for the love he feels or the care and the care and, and trust that he feels for someone else. That would be a great one uh, for a retrospective scene where somebody has just found out a loved one passed away in the hospital and they go up to, you know, ostensibly a parent's room and they're going through their personal effects and looking at family photos, having a list song that... Um, you know, it is a list of special times without being too specific or a list of how that person made them feel. It's a great application for that. Yeah, um, that's another way to do a list song. Yeah, list songs um, can be very helpful. I, I recommend to my students uh, that they take lists of things when they go to collaborate with people. Have a theme and just make a list of examples of, of what that theme might suggest uh, to you about how the singer feels and what the singer would do for that or, you know, what the singer has done for that in the past. I did this for you and, and I still didn't, you know, there's that great other uh, Bruno Mars song, a Grenade. I'd throw my hand on a gr grenade for you. I'd, I'd stop a train for you. Throw my hand on a blade for you. That's it. Uh, but you wouldn't do the same for me. That's the last line of that chorus. Great <laughs> um, twist. I had two interesting conversations last night knowing that we were going to do this show today. And I called a friend of mine who's a music supervisor and then spoke to a friend of mine who's a music library owner. And I asked them both the same question and got two very different answers. I'll, I'll make this short because it's more important that the audience hear you than me. But I asked them, how important are universal lyrics um, for the up and upcoming um, onslaught of COVID-19 shows. Uh, the music library owner said to me, I want everything to have universal lyrics. Um, okay. The music supervisor said to me, a lot of the music that's going to be in these shows will not be music that will be featured over a montage, for instance, where universal lyrics are, you know, a, a must. They have to explain the emotion that the story would otherwise tell if the script is being heard. So he said, you know, a lot of this stuff is going to take place in elevators, restaurants, which I, I've put in the listings. It, it's going to be in places, car radios. It's going to be background source music. And he said, frankly, I don't give a damn about the lyric. We don't want lyrics that are about the story in those places. When you walk into a bar with a friend and you're talking to each other about, so do you think this you know, virus is getting serious enough that they're gonna lock us down kind of thing, the song playing from the jukebox in the bar isn't gonna be about the emotions you're feeling from the virus, and nor should it be, it would be weird. So I thought that was two interesting perspectives. So I wanna take what I learned from them and bring up the point that the writers of these songs 
should think about the potential applications. What kind of scene would it be in? We talked about this on Monday on Taxi TV. Um, and then use Robin's advice to guide you through the emotions that you need to write about. So you don't want to tell the whole story, but you want to talk about the emotion that the person in the scene would be feeling, especially if, if it's a montage and there's no script. Am I correct in repeating that? Right. right. Yeah, so source music, which is the music coming out of the radio, the car radio, or being played in the yoga class where everyone is relaxing, <laughs> or it's or the cafe or the nightclub for everybody, where everybody's dancing. Those songs just need to sound like what just... They need to sound like what would be realistically playing in those scenes right. because that's what they're used for. They're used to create realism. So if a song is playing in the supermarket in the background or playing on an elevator in the background, it's going to sound like what you would normally hear in a supermarket or in the elevator. Supermarkets are playing, you know, uh, just hit songs. A lot of them are playing kind of these... Um, uh, uh, make you feel good while you shop so you'll buy more kinds of songs, mid-tempo energy, mid to up-tempo, but not too up-tempo, and make you feel good. So next time you're in a supermarket, notice what's playing. But those kinds of songs, music libraries already have a lot of them, and music supervisors right. already have a lot of them. Um, if you want a supervisor to go, oh, that song, I'm going to use that song in a scene someday. I don't know when, but I'm going to use that. That is, right now, probably a better, uh, the best time of all for this, because um, they're going to need so much in the coming months to fill the slots in those montages in the hospital and, and the driving, the scene where the person whose dad just died is driving home. There's a big one in, um, in This Is Us that went on for quite a long time while he remembered his history with his dad. Right. And... Um, in the background, they played a song called We Can Always Come Back to This, and uh, it was absolutely magnificent. Um, and that song was, um, you wouldn't put that song into a scene in a nightclub or a bar or anything like that, because it just would never be played in one of those places. So and that's what you do have to decide on is, are you aiming for song score to go underneath a scene or a commercial, or are you aiming for song source, which is a so source music, which is um, more of the things that are sourced within the scene, within the world of the characters, that source music. So what we're talking about today is song score, underscore, that adds and enhances the emotion in the scene, whereas source music is going to enhance the realism of the scene, not necessarily the emotion. I'm going to spring something on you, which we have not talked about in advance of this show. Um, so don't hate me for this, please, Robin. But let's talk about heroism. Um, and we, we touched on before talking about first responders and nurses and everything. Um, will there be any difference in the way that heroes are treated in songs used in TV commercials versus how they're treated in songs used in TV shows? And the reason I ask this question is you got 30 seconds to create your hero or talk about the emotions that your hero inspires in a commercial. You may have a minute to a minute and a half if they're doing a montage, you know, in a TV show. Does that, uh, how does that affect how one approaches the, the, the revealing of the emotions, I guess? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, commercials versus TV shows or films. Um, here's the thing, often they will, a commercial will use your 30 seconds of your, of your, chorus. Right. So we were talking about songs about, you know, heroes or something like that. And if you look at a song like uh, Firework by Katy Perry, you could just use, because baby, you're a firework. Come on, show them what you're worth. Make them go, oh, 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 as you shoot across the sky. I, I. They could just use that in the commercial and it would work great. So when you're, work, when you're working for commercial or for film and TV, make sure that your chorus can stand alone. And, and, if, and your, if your chorus, keep, you can keep your chorus fairly short for film and TV. Um, this isn't a particularly short one, but you can do that. For radio, choruses are fully developed. I mean, they've got big, long sections of stuff that choruses do for radio. But for film and TV, you want a peak moment that they could just take that out 
And if that's the only thing that the viewer hears, then it sums up the emotion of that scene or and your song. And that's going to be in the refrain or the chorus of your song. For, for TV shows, we don't usually put in those really big choruses like Firework. That, even though it's a universal lyric, that, show, that song doesn't get used in filming TV because it's got a really big chorus. And it's going to draw the attention away from the action in the scene. Right. Um, it's it's going to be way too big for a scene. But it worked great in a commercial or in a trailer. Film trailers and commercials are very similar that way. I and we see a lot of like, anthemic songs in, pro, in uh, uh, film trailers and promos, TV promos for upcoming shows. And also in commercials, we see that stuff. But you don't see it in uh, TV shows because they're too big. You see it in video games. You hear those things in video games. You hear them in sports events. You hear them in competition shows. Those big, epic, anthemic songs. And you, and Jackie had a whole bunch of those listings for a while there around the road rally last year. Um, they had a whole bunch of them. But uh, now I think we're going to be moving a little bit away from that big anthemic thing and more towards an intimate, emotional thing, uh, which is what we've been talking about today. And I think that's where we're headed. For a while. It's funny, the music soup that I spoke to last night, I, I actually use the word anthemic. It's one of my favorite words. Uh, and he made the observation that he said he would place his bets on not a lot of anthemic stuff making it into the TV shows or the films, but in the end credits, they would have anthemic stuff, uh, which I thought yeah. was an interesting observation because he his point was they've already put you through all the emotions um, and they put a, you know, a, a, an ending on it. You know, it ended with the last frame of the last scene. So now what do you want the people who just watched the movie? Of course, nobody's going to see it in theaters for a while anyway. But what do you want the, the viewers in the theater to feel like when they walk out? They want to feel pride, pride in America, pride in humanity, pride in the first responders, pride in the medical community. So they're going to have big, bombastic, anthemic, you know, you're my hero stuff. I thought that was a kind of cool observation. Um, I, I, want to yeah, give, I, think I want to give a homework assignment based on something you said right at the top of the show today. Uh, Robin's observation about the TV commercials, uh, and you're absolutely right, Robin, they're just tons of them almost every commercial i saw last night granted i only watched about an hour of tv but almost every commercial was specifically about the pandemic so can you guys go into the comments section in youtube after the archive goes up tonight and post examples of commercials that you saw with songs and what the song was if you can figure it out by shazamming it or something and what the central message and central emotion were. And the person that does the best job of that, I'm going to give away a free copy of Shortcuts to Songwriting for Film and Television. Um, you probably won't get it until we're allowed to go back to the office and ship it out because I've only got one of these at home. But uh, I, I think that would be a great homework exercise for you guys. It will make you more keenly aware of what Robin so um, keenly pointed out at the beginning of the show. Um, what else you got, Robin? We got twelve minutes left. If you got more stuff, um, I got I got a couple more examples here. Um, <clears throat> you had mentioned, uh, and this is a big emotion that's coming up uh, that we're seeing, and that's optimism and hope. And uh, what I was saying earlier about being careful about you know always no false hope. And, you know, don't strike any false notes. Don't try to try too hard to force people to feel something they're not ready to feel. So how do you express hope and optimism? Um, and I got a couple of, let me see, I've got an image. I've got a song idea here. One of the most licensed songs in film and TV for a long time, besides Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, um, was a song called Walking on Sunshine by Katrina and the Waves, which was released in 1983. And um, the chorus is just, I'm walking on sunshine, whoa, I'm walking on sunshine, you know, like three, four times. And then, uh, and don't it feel good? She ends with that. I'm walking on sunshine. That's it. That's all there is. So why was that so heavily licensed? And I think it's because not only did the music, the melody, and the woes at the ends of every line kind of feel relaxed and fun, but um, sunshine is a word with a lot of 
associations that are positive. Right. Warmth, light, uh, bright, good times, summertime, relaxed, happy. Sunshine just feels good. And when you pick a word with a lot of associations, you can accomplish a lot with very little. Um, the idea of walking on sunshine m makes you feel uplifted into the air, like you're walking on a rainbow and you're lightweight. And it just, that whole phrase is geared, whether or not they thought about it when they wrote it, it expressed a feeling of uh, feel good, lightness, and happiness. And you don't have to say much, you know, to get people, if they're in the mood and they're willing to go along with you, they will go along with you. Um, and feel good. Walking on sunshine will make them feel good. So substituting images with associations that express a lot in a few words for words that don't have a lot of associations give, allows you to express layers of feeling without the listener even being aware of it. This is one of those areas where you could say we manipulate a little bit, but our intentions are always good. Um, so I don't mind it, and I, I don't use that word very often, but it is what we do. I so call that example, I call that pos positive manipulation. That is a very good phrase. Perfect. <laughs> manipulation. That is what we do. We manipulate people's emotions if they're willing to come along with us. If they're really depressed that day, they're not gonna. They'll just turn the song off. But many, many people who are on the fence, they'll come right along with you, and they'll feel good as soon as they hear something with a nice melody and a, and a happy lyric that's honest and, and simple and reaches them on a level that they may not be aware of. And that's where the manipulation kind of goes on. So if I wanted to say, I could say something like, I'm going to get in touch with my spiritual self today. I'm an introvert. I like to stay in. I'm going to get in touch with my spiritual self while I'm indoors today. If I tried to make that a lyric... It wouldn't do anything for anybody. I'm going to get in touch with my spiritual self today. Um, but if I say, and here's a lyric line from a Joshua Radin song called Beautiful Day. So he says, he says, I'm going to wash the dust off my soul. I'm going to listen to some rock and roll. No cares come. I'm making a beautiful day. And his beautiful day is getting back in touch with his soul. He's going to wash the dust off his soul. It's a great line. And it says, I want to get back to something I've forgotten. I lost touch with my inner self, my soul. And soul is such a powerful word. It has lots of associations. Dust says forgotten, devalued, thrown away in the attic somewhere. Wash is a great word for renewal. renewal. All those layers, all those associations come right along with those words. Wash, dust. Soul. And then there's great, listen to some rock and roll. Rock and roll is youth, it's rebellion, it's feeling alive. Rock and roll. So in just those two lines, he made you feel like you wanted to free yourself and feel refreshed and renewed and you, and you want to do it. And maybe even a little bit you are doing it because he's doing it. So that's the power of using words with associations when you're writing emotional, uh, universally emotional lyrics. That's another way you can get around this idea of what do I say when I'm writing uh, universal lyrics, is use words with associations. So as you watch TV, as you go through your life, if you like to read books, I read at night before I fall asleep, um, just be aware uh, if, of some of the words that are going by you. And when a word kind of resonates for you, if it picks up your emotions a little bit, I like that word. Make a note of it. Start making a list of those words. There's a wonderful, in Firework, the Katy Perry song, she opens it with, do you ever feel like a plastic bag? <laughs> what, what well, we all know what it means. Plastic bag, is, you can throw it out, or uh, it's, it's worthless, it's, it, it's lightweight, it blows around in the wind, it's generally dirty if it's out on the street. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind? You know, that's a great example of feeling rootless and lost and lightweight and empty. Um, and she does it because the word plastic, the image of plastic bag is in there. Yep. Wanting to start again. Do you ever feel so paper thin, like a house of cards, one blow from caving in? House of cards is another one, paper thin, nothing. Do you ever feel like that? 
And that's a great lyric because it uses a series of images that have associations with them to make you feel what she's talking about. And who is that again? That's uh, Firework. That's the opening uh, That's the opening verse of Firework by Katy Perry. Really? And, and six of I never noticed that, the plastic yeah. bag part. Yeah, oh, it's good. Roar is another one with a great lyric, great lyric. I used to bite my tongue. I used to not rock the boat. I used to, yeah, it's a wonderful opening. That's Roar. That's another big anthemic epic song. So speaking of anthemic songs, for the ends of movie reels or whatever, um, Firework and Roar are two great anthemic songs. So is Rachel Platten's fight song. Right. So is Pink, uh, What About Us? And, of course, everything that Zade Wolf ever wrote, because um, that's what he does. Um, Richard's in anthemic epic songs. Those people are really good to look at. It's funny. We sometimes get complaints from members. Not often, but uh, we will get complaints. You guys use the same references uh, in, in your listings that are looking for similar types of material. Well, of course we do, because those are the best that there are. That's what you should aspire to. Not something that's obscure and not quite as good. Uh, so anyway, for if any of you watching the show today have ever sent us an email about that, now you know why. Uh, yes. Well, yes. Robin, this was I incredible, as always. I mean, every time uh, you go on stage, is I always say to Robin after she comes off the stage at the road rally, I don't need to be in the ballroom. It's the, the one time during the entire weekend where I know I'm absolutely not needed in that room and I could, you know, go grab a burger while Robin's up there. But every year, like clockwork, I sit off the side of the stage and I write notes because the stuff that comes out of you, it's like nobody else, certainly not any authors that write books like this or teachers that teach this stuff, I don't believe that they look as deeply at the the nooks and crannies as you do. They're all kind of stuck on on songwriting craft. You put a lot more emotion into it and i really not just that you put emotion into it you look for where the emotion is in it and uh this book i'm going to plug the book again because i believe in it so much um like i said we will give one of these away to the person that has the best example posted in the comments under the video give us like 10 minutes for uh, youtube to process the video and get it up there in the archive uh person who comes up with the best example of music used in a TV commercial and tell us why it's such a great example. That person's going to get a free copy of this. Um, everybody else, you can find this on Amazon. Um, I should disclose I am the publisher and I make a couple of bucks when you buy one, but I'm the only publisher you'll probably ever meet that uh, you will ever meet that will say, if you don't think this book is worth every penny you spent on it, send it back to me in good condition and I will refund your money. Um, it's an amazing book, and I think a lot of people um, bought your first book because it was so good and got, you know, it's still so good, and it got so much buzz, and they thought, well, now I know I'm a better songwriter because I read Robin's uh, Shortcuts to Hit Songwriting, but what they don't realize is this is a completely different book on a completely different subject, and it's really important because this is where the market is now. So, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you did a great job. Um, also, Robin's got three ebooks that are out right now. Um, yeah. That are level yeah. one, level two, and level three. We looked at her doing a revision of Shortcuts, uh, an updated revised version of Shortcuts to Hit Songwriting. And yeah, she could come up with some different references of songs and some other techniques that weren't included. But, you know, Robin being kind of. Uh, She's OCD, yeah. OCD about research and always loves to give everything her, like way more than 110%. So she wrote so much stuff that those three ebooks, which are $9.99 a piece, um, have 900, how's it, 919 pages? Something like that? Yeah, we figured out. Yeah. yeah. We couldn't put it out at. I mean, there was no way to do that. Right. Um, so anyway, yep. if you don't have Robin's Shortcuts to Hit Songwriting, or even if you do and you want to get a bunch of uh, great new stuff and updated references, the three e-books are the same price as one printed book. And uh, yeah, again, if you don't think they're worth it, return the e-books to me in resellable condition. I'll refund your money. There was a joke in there. Nobody's laughing, damn it. Um 
anyway, Robin, you're amazing. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know that you're doing a lot of classes and stuff. Um, people can find out about what Robin teaches and, and her classes and consulting at robinfrederick.com. Um, is that the, the main site yeah. they should go to that will get them everywhere else they need to go? Um, all right. Yeah. With that, I want to say goodbye to all you guys in the chat room today. It was great hanging out with you. Some people I didn't get to say hello to, like uh, Rogany and Adriana, uh, John Pearson. Uh, hey, Pearson, the coyote was back today, 10 a.m., walked right through the yard like he owned it. Anyway, uh, thanks, you guys. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. And Robin, thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> They're all virtually waving. All right. Uh, somebody's saying, what about the show tomorrow? Yeah, I haven't heard from my friend that wanted to go to the desert with me. So as far as I know, there is a show tomorrow. We'll update you on uh, in the Twitterverse or something or Facebook if it's not going to happen. And we will see you soon. Probably tomorrow for another exciting episode of Taxi's Happy Hour, Quarantini Happy Hour. Bye, you guys.